A one Soweto woman saw a great need in her community and started a manufacturing company called Ukamba Prosthetics and Orthotics. She's dedicated her career to developing prosthetic limbs that are water resistant and importantly, affordable. Her mission is to ensure that these are made available to anyone in need in order to improve their independence, or at least the independence of amputees who may not currently be able to afford them. Her name is Smogile Mungati. She joins us now in our studios for more on her efforts. Thank you so much for coming through, uh, and welcome to the AM Report. So great to see you. Thank you so much, Ayanda, for hosting me, and good morning to um, all of you at home. Uh, you know, I'll be frank. We, we came across your story on, on social media, and we thought it was really important to highlight, given the work that you do. And, you know, typically, people describe the kind of work that you do as passion entrepreneurship. You know, it started somewhere, and in many instances, there's a story, perhaps an experience, that drives people into doing the kind of work that you do. What is that for you? Why do you you know, embark on this particular, particular path? Um, to be honest, um, this actually started from a personal experience where one was actually visiting one of the local cl hospitals close by. So it's like one actually had a gum infection. So that gum infection um, led me to my dreams because, after all, I was the one that was ill in pain. Yeah. But when I was actually visiting one of the local um, hospitals close by, I was actually provoked by how, you know, our people um, can't actually access prosthetic limbs. And for one minute, I literally had to put myself in an MPT shoe to say, yes, today it might not be me. But what if it could be me or one of my loved ones, you know? And I went to the MPT. I tried to understand what are some of the challenges that he is actually facing. And I was told that he's been coming at the very same hospital trying to access a prosthetic limb every now and then. It's the same story over and over again. And it's more than five years, you know? Wow. Then on the very same day, I literally went and spoke to someone um, in charge in the orthopedic side because literally the hospital actually manufactured these. And um, fortunate enough, like, you know, the guy was very humble. He actually took me through and he actually told me that currently as a hospital, they actually um, face with lack of skills in the sector, lack of resources. They also rely on exports and imports. And not all hospitals can actually manufacture or produce prosthetics. So it literally becomes like a, chal a challenge to them because they turn up to be like a main supplier, you know. Yeah. And then um, from there, on the very same day again, I actually asked, does the hospital produce this? They said yes. Then I actually um, asked, can I actually witness the manufacturing process? Where I was actually taken through, I saw how they actually produce this using the traditional methods, you know. And then from there, I was like, I went back home and I said, okay, one way or the other, there must be something that I can actually do, you know. Um, even though I was not affected, like, directly, because I don't know how it feels like to live with someone who's actually, you know, um, living with physical disability and all that. But on the very same day when I actually got home, little I knew that close by within my community, I also have people that I actually face with the very same challenge. Mm. So when I also try to engage with them and interact, that's the feedback that I also got, as same as the one that I also um, got from the hospital, from that one user, you know. And then from that day, then I just saw that, okay, there is a need, you know. Um, there must be another way that one can actually try and come up with a solution and solve this. Yeah, and you found one of those ways, I'd like to believe. I mean, you're able to provide these aesthetics that are, you know, I imagine perfectly usable but also affordable and water resistance. You'll tell us why that's important in, in a moment. But it, it does, I guess, lead to questions about whether or not you reckon more can be done to reduce the prices of these um, aesthetics and, and orthotics in a context where we know these are desperate needs. It's not a luxury at all. Absolutely. So um, as then, I think... Um, that's what actually inspired us, you know, to actually start Uguhamba Prosthetics and Arctics. So literally, Uguhamba is actually an African word meaning mobility. And then, um, so from the need, um, and then that's how we actually started this journey. And then from there, we actually were like, okay, um, with the technologies that we're actually going to use, we'll try to decrease, you know, the pricing because we understand that it's very um, expensive and um, if people actually have to access it from the public sector, it's free. But the lengthening, um, there's a lengthening waiting period right. around time, you know. And then that's how we actually use your advanced technology, such as your 3D printing, you know, and also using eco-friendly material just to try to fasten the, um, the turnaround time. So with our process of manufacturing, it's like 80% more affordable to what that exists in the market. Oh, sure, because my next question was going to be around how you're keeping your business alive. I mean, there must be costs yeah. that go into into making these things, but what you're saying is that given what you're charging, you're able to do just fine. Yes. Sure. Um, there's going to be a, a lot of discussions, I guess, around, you know, ways to which the prosthetics themselves are made, they, they're water resistance. Why is that something worth highlighting? Um, to be honest, what we also, um, um, what we actually, like, you know, um, from our users, because what we tried to understand was that 
before we actually produce this right even though we are not like directly affected but it all it's also crucial that we actually try to involve the user yeah and then um if we actually involve the user and allow them to be part of the manufacturing process that will actually make us to produce something that will know it cater for their needs you know and their requirements because we also understood in the sector that most of these prosthet prosthetics are actually produced by one size fit all you know they don't cater according to the client specification and requirements so that's where as Wuhamba, that's our competitor edge to say that we produce this like cost effective also water resistant and also customized saying that you tell us what is it that you want us to do for you and then we actually um, produce according to that yeah i imagine there's also some you know space for for training about how to use the actual prosthetic once you have it right because um yes it's an aid but it, it's not a, a perfect substitute yes. to having an actual you know an actual limb so um i think also that's one of our competitor edge as well because with us when we produce this we actually produce this in a sense that when a user is using it he or she is able to overcome disability in a psychological um, level yeah. so that's why they come in various colors that delights the user and also you can also whenever you are wearing it you are allowed to actually match your attire because um Others you would find they do have these prosthetics, but you would understand it's very heavy for them to actually carry, or is it boring, you know? So we actually make it in a sense that it gives them that flavor, and also people can actually display it proudly. So there's room for creativity yes. in how you put together yes. the prosthetics. Okay, I actually didn't think about that. Yeah. <laughs> but it does, I guess, lead us to, you know, the stories around how people's lives are changed here. And I wonder whether there's any, you know, customer, patient, I'm not sure what the technical term is, that stayed with you, you know, someone that you've helped and, and you've kind of seen how your intervention has, you know, enabled them to be, you know, just, a, you know, a, an active citizen in, in society. Yeah, because to be honest, like, um, obviously when you're about to start something, it's not easy, right? You have to implement it so that people can start believing in you. So that has been our journey as we come and some of the challenges that we actually encountered. But however, when we were actually literally able to actually try to change life, because imagine if a child, he or she does not have an, a leg or an arm, and you are able to, you know, um, provide um, access to mobility, at the end of the day, you bring a smile to a child, you know, yeah. it's like you give them hope where there's no hope, you know. So um, with our prosthetics, we we're actually able to at least impact um, close to 10 um, users. And then, um, like, the most of our impact came from our crush fillers, you know, because we also produce, like, your crush fillers for those that are actually using crushes and having, like, existing crushes. So we actually assist with that. And with that, we have seen so much of impact, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, we live in a country where we are spoiled for choice for the problems we have. Thanks for bringing forward at least one of the solutions to those problems. Really appreciate your time thank on the AM you. report. Thank you so and, much. And, uh, yeah, may you continue to help many people who are in desperate need of this kind of work that you do. Smongile Mugami is, uh, Mugadi, I beg your pardon, is the founder of Okamba Prosthetics and Orthotics. Once again, Smongile, thanks very much indeed for coming through.